The reason why most of you are probably here is the Sabre engine. So I'll give you, I'll, I'll start from the basics. So rockets, you know, you carry all your fuel and you carry all of your oxygen um, all the way and you, you burn it in a combustion chamber, you chuck it out the back to produce your thrust and you and you, you take that all the way up with you through the atmosphere into space, trying to drop it off bits of the rocket on the way to kind of frantically try and reduce the amount of weight you've got. Um, but when if you think about it, we've got a whole atmosphere full of oxygen that we can make use of up until we reach that kind of that point of uh, exiting the atmosphere. So why can't we use this? Well, this is what Reaction Engines is trying to do. We're, we're, we've designed an engine that can actually operate as a hybrid um, and it can operate in air breathing mode and rocket mode. So essentially from standstill to Mach 5, which is five times the speed of sound, it can operate as an air breathing engine kind of similar to a jet engine, um, but one with a rocket on the back. Um, and then from Mach 5 to Mach 25, which is five, 25 times the speed of sound, uh, it can operate in rocket mode. And that front, the cell there, closes up, and that gives you a final boost into orbit that you need. Um, but I suppose then, the, uh, well, and the, the, so the, the main benefit of this is that you haven't got to carry all of that liquid oxygen, and you've got to carry much less fuel with you into, into orbit. And so what you can do is essentially open up the, uh, the ability for, uh, you know, looking into single stage to orbit spacecraft and um, or two stage to orbit spacecraft stuff that you can't do with current technology. Um, so this is fantastic, right? Um, but why hasn't it been done already? And the main problem with being able to do something like this is the uh, heat. So essentially, as we get, so say we're traveling at Mach 5, right? We're pretty high up in the atmosphere. The air is cold, but the problem is when we start to decelerate that air into the engine and uh, compress it, so as it decelerates, it compresses, uh, it heats up because all of that kinetic energy and the speed of the air is getting transformed into heat energy, thermal energy. And how it turns out is that at Mach 5, you actually end up seeing temperatures of about a thousand degrees centigrade at all points along the skin and in the engine. And that is far too hot for engines to deal with. Uh, you know, it, it, you're talking way above the melting point of things like aluminium alloys. And um, that's before you even start doing anything with it. So, uh, you know, you want to be able to put this into a compressor, compress it, and then put it into a combustion chamber to burn it. By that point, you'll be, you know, you'd, you'd be talking you know, a couple of thousand degrees centigrade. So what we've got to do is we've got to cool down this air before it gets to our engine. So this is the this is the kind of major technological breakthrough. And um, what we need to do and what we do with our pre-cooler is we cool down this thousand degrees centigrade air down to, I think, minus 150 degrees C in about a twentieth of a second. And um, to put that into perspective, that's <laughs> about uh half as fast no twice as fast sorry as it takes for a human to blink your eye basically so these are pretty incredible numbers and pretty pretty cool stuff um but and now once we've got this cool dense air from our pre core we can actually use it in a kind of traditional almost a traditional jet engine cycle so we can take our cool dense air compress it stick it in our combustion chamber and burn it with our hydrogen to produce our thrust. Um, but waste not, want not. We've also got a huge amount of heat that we've extracted from that air, and we can do stuff with this, yeah? So we've got a helium loop running through our pre-cooler, which extracts heat from the air, that kind of, you know, 1,000 degrees C air. And we use this helium, a uh, hot helium, to drive our turbo machinery in the core engine itself. And we all, we've got enough like heat left over in that helium to actually re-inject heat back into the cryogenic hydrogen and boost the amount of thrust we can get out of it, which is uh, pretty cool. So this um, kind of regeneration of the, uh, uh, the waste heat, if you will, um, has been a big part of what I've been working on as a design engineer at Reaction Engines.